Today we have news from BMW. This is a brand new generation of one of BMW's classic heritage bikes. Yeah, and I think personally this is one of the coolest motorcycles that BMW makes and has been making for uh, the past few years or so. And so yeah, it's really exciting that we get an all new model and some variations of it too. It's not just the R12 9T, there's also a separate R12 model we need to talk about. Yeah, so what they've done basically with the R9T is that they've made a next generation of it and for the flagship model of that, the R12 9T, they've made the name a lot more confusing. Uh, the R12, which is a little bit more of an entry model, has a much easier name. I like that more, but this is actually a bike that they teased a little while back. Now we have the full specs. Yeah, and we've known that it's coming. We have all the specs here and you're looking at the bike right now on the screen. So um, real quick, before we jump into the specs, the style of it, we'll touch a little more on it as we get down, but you walk up to this bike, you see photos of it, you know exactly what it is. They didn't stray too far from the classic R9T design, which I think is a really great thing. Yeah, especially on the R12 9T, that bike still maintains a lot of the looks that the older generation generation had. In fact, if you're not looking at them side by side, I wouldn't blame you for confusing the two. But what is kind of cool is that they now have this separate R12 model that does look a little bit more different. It's more like a cruiser. And like you said, we'll get more into the specs and details on that in a moment. But let's talk about the motor. It is essentially the same engine it was. Yeah, so it's an 1170cc air and oil cooled boxer engine. Of course, that's what these bikes are known for. And power numbers are exactly the same as they used to be. 109 horsepower, 85 foot pounds of torque. And this being a BMW boxer, we can um, pretty, pretty much guess what it's gonna sound like. We know what this bike's gonna sound yeah, like. Yeah, and it is a cool noise. Those numbers, that's on the R1290. The R12, just the more standard base model, actually has an output around 95 horsepower and 82 pound-feet of torque, so almost the same on torque, uh, but a little down on horsepower, so it's a slightly detuned version, which hopefully means that it'll be a little bit more affordable. Yeah, that's always great here um, to see, you know, the price come down on some of these um, lower powered bikes and not everyone needs the most powerful variant available. And also not something we deal with here in the States, but BMW is gonna sell these overseas for sure. And there's all kinds of licensing classifications in other parts of the world, so. Yeah, which is part of the reason for that. And then in terms of the transmission, you've got a six speed transmission. You can get an optional quick shifter and it's a shaft drive bike, which BMW is big on, especially going back into their history. So it's the same here on these bikes. But now these bikes also have a bunch of different ride modes. Yeah, so you're gonna get three as standard, at least on the uh, R129T. So those are gonna be rain, road, and dynamic, um, which, you know, can pretty much guess what those are gonna do. And then two extra modes on the R12, which are rock and roll. I like how they're naming those, kind of a fun little twist. And that gives you just some more customizability so you can really fine tune things and set them exactly how you want. Yeah, so with the rock and roll modes, it's a little bit like what they've done in the past on the R18, which is their other main heritage bike. Uh, but whereas the engine is mostly the same, one thing that they have changed up a lot on this new generation of the bike is the frame. So it's a new steel trellis frame, and they've changed up the design such that the main frame is no longer two pieces, it's one piece. So they say it's a little bit lighter. They didn't say how much lighter it actually is, so it's probably not that significant, but is a simpler frame design and it adds just a little bit of length to the wheelbase as well. Yeah, uh, that's one of those things we really can't comment on, you know, how it changes the bike until we get up and yeah, see it and interact we'll with out. it. Um, but yeah, you've got that going on for it. Also fully adjustable uh, front forks on the 9T and you have uh, adjustable damping in the rear for the shock as well. Um, and then as far as travel goes, 4.7 inches of suspension travel on the 9T goes down to three and a half inches of suspension travel on the R12. Yeah, so both of these bikes have inverted 45 millimeter front forks, but it's obviously a relatively different suspension system that you get on the 9T versus standard R12 because that travel is so different and there's more adjustability on the 9T. But both of these bikes do have dual 310 millimeter discs with radial monoblock calipers, which is pretty cool. And something I like 
also about this platform that BMW has been pushing a good bit on the R18 and they're also, it seems like gonna push it on this, is that they've designed this as a platform to be customizable. Yeah, and hopefully that takes off pretty quickly because when that uh, R18 came out, there were some really awesome custom builds that came yeah. out just right away. So um, this is a bike that's been pretty popular in the past as far as customizing, and I think that should uh, stay pretty true. And I'm excited to see out, uh, I'm excited to see not only what, you know, owners come up with and custom shops come up with, but I'm sure down the line, BMW will also come out with some special editions and variants, and those will be exciting to take a look at too. Yeah, now for instruments, you've got two traditional round dials on the R12 9T and a single dial on the R12. But the feature on here that I like, which is of course optional, as many, many things that are cool on these BMW bikes are, there is an optional three and a half inch TFT, and that's not a very big TFT, but it's a really cool looking display and I think it fits the character of this bike a lot because if it had BMW's big 10.25 inch screen, it would just look out of place on a more retro bike like this. But that really high quality screen, what they're calling it a micro TFT, looks badass. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think you're right. This is a bike you don't necessarily want to see a huge screen on. I'm I mean, surprised you like it though. You're usually the guy that wants the old school analog dials and especially on a classic looking bike. But yeah, it depends. I, I think there's enough about this bike. It's 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 not like a Royal Enfield. This is very clearly is a modern bike with some semi-retro styling. It's what BMW calls neo-retro. So seeing a screen on this doesn't really bug me. It depends on how much they charge for it. If they charge a boatload for it, then it might be hard to justify. And, you know, I mean, that's definitely, a, there's a non-zero chance of that. But if that screen isn't a massively expensive option, I think it's pretty slick. Like you said, screens don't fit, uh, giant screens don't fit on every bike. But as far as integrating a modern screen in a way that doesn't look too out of place, I think BMW just absolutely nailed it here. And uh, I think it's a cool screen design. So yeah, yeah, I'm digging that. Now you also get a lot of riding aids that come standard on this. You get standard traction control, st standard drag torque control, standard ABS. If you do want cornering ABS, again, you have to opt for an optional ABS Pro package. So it's another way that they're gonna charge some more money for some of those more premium features. Uh, but yeah, you do get a decent amount. You also get standard keyless ride, which is pretty nice. Yeah, so you can just leave that key in your pocket, walk up to the bike, have nothing to fumble with, leave your gloves on, that's all nice. Um, optional Hill Start Assist Pro, and then going through some of the just design elements on this bike. Uh, aluminum tank, so you walk up and knock on it, you're gonna hear a nice clank. And then as far as some of the dimensions go, uh, seat height on the 9T is 31.3 inches. The R12 is a little easier to get your leg over, 29.7 inches. Yeah, and the R12 also has a steel tank instead of the 9T's aluminum tank, so there's a few more differences there. And the R12, as you can tell, just generally has more of a cruiser style. They even showed some pictures of some of these with a windshield on them. Uh, it's got a 19-inch front wheel and a 16-inch rear. And some of these also have a rear fender on them, which is pretty cool. It's definitely different from the style of some of the R9Ts that we've seen in the past. They've done a lot of different styles of them from the Cafe to the Urban GS to the Scrambler. You know, there's been a bunch of different models of this bike, but this as a cruiser, to me, looks really good. And I like this R12 because it feels more different than the R12 9T. This feels like more of a departure and a little bit more of a fresh offering from BMW. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's something fresh, something different. And uh, yeah, I mean, I love the, the 9T. I've always thought that was one of the best looking bikes on the road. So like I said at the start of this, I'm glad they didn't stray too far away from that with the, with the 9T. But yeah. again, at the same time, it is cool to see something fresh and different. And I mean, that's if, what gets you excited. If I had to guess, I would assume that that you're probably more of the R12 9T kind of guy, which is a bit more of a retro naked bike kind of look. And I actually, unsurprisingly, like this R12, those wire spoke wheels, the rear fender, especially in this gray with gold accents color scheme that we're looking at here behind us. That is, to me, that that's one of the better looking bikes I've seen on the market. I don't it's think it's really sure. I can't disagree with you. I would ride the hell out of that too. <laughs> yeah. Spoke to wheels, looks good. gold rims. You got the gold matching handlebar, the twin exhaust out the back that 
So many bikes today have these ugly black, you know, looks like rattle can exhaust. This is a nice factory looking exhaust on there. So yeah, yeah that's they, a sharp bike. BMW knows how to make a, a good looking motorcycle. Well, especially in this category, because this, this category of their bikes, the heritage bikes, they're more interested in making aesthetic bikes than necessarily purely functional motorcycles. So you're going to see less plastic um, and less functionality and a little bit more form, more metal, more nice premium and kind of retro looking materials. So this is 100% my style. I really love this motorcycle. I think yeah. it's cool. Um, as far as pricing goes, the price is definitely going to reflect all those, you know, more premium materials probably. We don't yeah. have specific pricing information yet. Um, we do know that some of the more base model R90s started, what, around? Around 11. $11,000. So, yeah. Some of the more be... spec'd out ones started around fifteen dollars or $16,000. Yeah. And then you can add, you know, option 719 packages on top of them. Yeah. So. Like right now, if you get the R9T Pure, it's uh, about 11 MSRP before you get the other fees going out of a dealership. And if you get the R9T, which is the more top end version with nicer suspension, aluminum tank and all that. Yeah, it's about 16. So it'll be interesting to see where the R12 being a little more, more entry level comes in at pricing wise. I'm hoping that it's around that 11 or $12,000 figure because then it could be pretty compelling, especially if it's a little bit closer to that $11,000 figure. Yeah, so there you have it. Let us know uh, what you think of this new bike down in the comments below. If you own, you know, an older R12, is this going to be enough for you to... Um, R90. Yeah, R90. These, see, these names are confusing, names man. Are they bad. are I can't stay on top of them. It's, Look, I mean, most motorcycle names are pretty bad, uh, but yeah, I mean, these ones are up there yeah, <laughs> with so. the rest of them. <laughs> It's part of reviewing motorcycles. You got to deal with some of the terrible names. So anyway, let us know if you have an older R9T. Did I say that right? Yeah. In the comments below. And if, you know, these changes are enough to make you go out and get a new one. And if not, what would you have liked uh, BMW to do for that to happen? So thanks for watching. Check out alttfl.com. See you in the next one.